Alpine Comics, investing in Comics 3. Alpine Comics, investing in Comics 3. Okay. All right. Now, um, there's no guarantees in comics that the audience will stay there, of course. There's only probabilities that people will probably still be interested as time goes by. But, uh, I want to, I want to discuss something, discuss something. If you're, uh, on YouTube regularly and you look at comic videos, investing comics and stuff like that, and comic speculation videos and hot comics and stuff like that, you'll have a bit of an idea about how it all works and stuff. And, uh, you might've come across the, uh, sort of, um, you, you would know about key issues and first appearances and this comic's hot for this reason, that comic's hot for that reason. And you might have come across the idea, the knowledge of optioned comics, which are comics which are optioned for TV series and movies and things like that. And if you'll notice, they're the kinds of things which people often, you know, they can often rise pretty high in value pretty quickly. Okay, and... um when the first Batman movie, well, not the first one, but of the modern, well, not even modern era, the, um, back in 1999, Michael Keaton's Batman movie, when that got released, it did very well, and Batman comics surged in value. Batman back issues surged in value. They went up a tremendous amount. It really started getting very popular. Now, since all the recent spates of movies... These characters' comics really start selling well at times because of the movies, and there's a lot of speculation. Uh, as soon as it, a movie's announced, they go straight to that title a lot of the time to find some of the early birds go straight to that title to find key key first appearances and things coming up in the movie, and that's specked on a, a lot. Comic Tom 101, he does that constantly. So that's a big spec thing, and people go straight to it and issue and. It's really hot for a while, a comic. For example, just, just the other day, uh, the details of who Id Idris Elba is in the Suicide Squad movie coming up. He's Bloodsport, and Superman number four from 1987 suddenly became huge. Huge demand just because of Bloodsport being in the movie. So, um, and if you've got a copy of Superman 4 from your collection... And you, you bought it for a cover price when, when it came out or in recent years. Yes. And you don't mind, if you're a very as an investor, you can make like, oh, possibly a few hundred dollars off that today. 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars in a resale and there's your return. So there's, a, there's usually a, a return if you've got the right product. If you've got the right, if you've got what people are after, there's usually a return. Now, I want to draw your attention to the Batman movie and what it did for Batman comics. Okay. The Wonder Woman movie was a, quite a big success. It's called the, 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 the success from the DC Extended Universe. They usually rate that as pretty much the best of them. <clears throat> They're a bit critical on some of them. That one's usually saying, good effort, Wonder Woman. Values of a 1987 series, Volume 2, very expensive comics at the moment, some of those issues, especially that modern cheetah, impossible to get online, very difficult to find. I'm lucky I've got one, but very difficult to find. So, some of these old Volume 1 Wonder Woman's expensive stuff, and like Aquaman, because of the Aquaman movie, hard to get some of those. Some of those issues, older ones, and various this and that, expensive things. The movies have an impact. Same with TV series, they have an impact. When it's found out, it has an impact, and when it gets released, there's the impact coming through with people going for them then. A lot of collectors moving in to get them then. So you see what I mean? Now I have a point. If we take Marvel as an example, can do with DC as well. It's just the same with DC. I'll do DC, actually. And I'll pretend this to Marvel. There's Superman in 1978. Batman in 1989. 
ultimately we're waiting a while and while we're finally getting the, the third one, uh, it's Green Lantern or something, or whatever it is, the, the new one, which is not Superman or Batman, I think it's Green Lantern, first of all, or Steel or something like that, Catwoman, Supergirl and stuff like that. Then all the recent ones, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. And of course with Marvel, Spider-Man heads, well, Howard Redux's the first one, isn't he? But then Punisher, is an, there's an old Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren. But remember Spider-Man trilogy and then Avengers and all the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They've hit their majors on the movies. If you look at Phase 4 of Marvel coming through, they're doing other titles as well now. I was surprised to see Guardians of the Galaxy. It was a brilliant movie, and the comics got hot for a bit. Now, that's that's where it's at. So what people are doing is this, looking to see what, what's coming up is the hot thing. But there's, a, there's another step, and this is a key. This is probably a, a, a thing, if you're a long-termer, to keep in mind where there's probably going to be a pretty good return if you get lucky. So listen up. They tend to get to the character of ongoings after a while as a movie. They usually get to it in time. A lot of things from Marvel and DC, they've got a lot of series which recur regularly enough. They run it as an ongoing for a while. Down the road a bit, it comes back again. They've got a lot of second tier titles, which down the road is probably a movie. The current plan's nothing at all for some things. But as an example, which I've been using as an example, Omega Man. It recurs regularly enough as a superhero team in the DC Comics universe. This decade, we're unlikely to get an Omega Man movie. It's unlikely. But 15, 20 years from now, it has a reasonably good chance. There's a lot of those titles like Nightwing. Well, that's coming up anyway. But all sorts of second tier titles which come often enough from the majors, which 15, 20 years from now, they're starting to do movies and all sorts of products. And for DC and for Marvel, if you take a hunch that they're probably going to do that comic soon enough, down the road a bit, there you go. So there's a lot of second tier titles which are recent enough, which have a chance if you can get early issues, especially a number one, which might not be too expensive, Spec on it now. Pick up those Omega Men number ones for five bucks and get them that cheap. Or those Outsiders number one. Or maybe even an Infinity Inc. You might get like even Infinity Inc. And all sorts of equivalent things from Marvel. Maybe like Silver Sable, which has, she might have a chance down the road a bit. Her, her first issue. Or Nova number one. All sorts of things which might be down the road 20, even 30 years, but once they build up a bit of legacy, and there's the movie. You bought a cheap van. The movie's come out. Could be worth a fortune. Your $5 investment for some of these issues, second-tier titles, their number ones and first appearances. Down the road a bit, there's a chance. There's a good chance. Because the movie studios, studios are probably going to get to a lot of those titles in time. It's speculation indeed. But in time, some of those things are likely to come out. And for experienced panopictographers who've been in the business for a while, it doesn't take a genius to work out the likelihood of what will possibly come soon enough.